our next next guest um Jerry, you really behave like you're 17 or 18 you know listen man <laughs> Yeah, you know, only the young people do this. You know, so you know that in 17 or 18, you, 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 you see the difference between you and Jerry, though. You, should, you, you see this, the difference. Nobody does that. So him coming in with him phone. And are, you, are you live or are you just recording as you go along? You're not put the for live, you know, Jerry. All right, so Jerry Small has joined us in the studio. And he's going to be our next guest, broadcaster, historian, Pan Africanist. Uh, it's five minutes after eight o'clock uh so much to talk about as we go along i want you to go to the website that we mentioned earlier just now caribbean religious trials and look at what's there it is it's mind-boggling also we mentioned two books earlier moon story by beverly query remember that book it's good to read that book it's a big book you can't read it off in a one week but read a chapter per day or a chapter two days and, uh, and and understand some more about the moon story on the island. It's really, really one of the better ones. And also we mentioned Three Eyes for the Journey. That's um, Diane Diaketty. Uh, uh, did she write that under Diane Diaketty? Yeah. L- let me just double, double check. Um, Three Eyes, T-H-R-E-E, <laughs> Eyes um, for the Journey. So, right, but in any case... That is um, a critical text for you to have. Diana has been on this program uh, before. Um, oh, so, okay. So it's published under Diane M. Stewart. Diane, D-I-A-N-N-E, M. Stewart. Three Eyes for the Journey, African Dimensions of the Jamaican Religious Experience. That's the name of the book. Three Eyes for the Journey, African Dimensions of the Jamaican Religious Experience. As we are joined live in studio by my brother, colleague, and friend, uh, Jerry Small. Let me get the right microphone working for you. All right, go ahead and fix Jerry. I turn it off. All right. Morning, Jerry. How are you doing? Greetings. Fine. Thank you. You heard me? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Good Good to have you. Yeah. Long time. We don't look at each other. Quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> but good to have you in the, in the studio. Uh, lots happening yeah. on our island that I know you have been paying very, very close attention to. And we want to, morning, 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 we want to get through as many of them as possible. Um, Jerry, yes. as, you, as you are coming in, I want to start at one of the later things, right? I don't know if you heard the Prime Minister addressing the nation... Um, well, it wasn't the nation, really. He was making a comment somewhere about the digital currency. And uh, he, he really ended up gaslighting, the, gaslighting people. Because basically, what he was saying is that he doesn't know. The, let me play it, because I have it. Let me, let me, let me play this clip. And have you comment on what we heard from the Prime Minister? I have my own thoughts. When I heard this, my first thought was of Louis XIV. And uh, what's, what's the term? La tot, 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 and, and that's Louis the Fourteenth, and, and and so I, I this this is what came to me that so he this is this is crazy. But listen to this. Let me let me play this. Why would the government spend billions of dollars to change currency to a new durable banknote that we don't have to be changing it ever so often, only to turn around and take it out of the system? Don't you see it is stupidness? But the number of people who have followed it gets me worried about what Jamaicans are consuming as information. I'm worried. Where is our reasoning? And why is it so simple for us to be attracted by rumors? As your prime minister, I have a duty to call it out when I see it. We have spent money to put in place a new durable note that accounts for the inflation in the society the convenience of the notes that you need to make payment. 
and then to just turn around and say no? Come on. It's stupid. As your prime minister, I have a duty, he says. As your, This is where the letter uh, Semois got, got me. You know. I am the state. As your prime minister, I have a duty. Your own thinking on this, because this is gaslighting at its best. This is blowing gas up where the sun... Oh, hold on. <laughs> no, up where the sun don't shine. Okay. Blowing smoke and gas up where the sun don't shine. Yes. This is crazy. No, let, uh, yeah, go ahead, man. Yeah, this is crazy. Because he was the one who announced earlier, and Curly Locks, who is a, a, a vlogger now, has done a great job from Twins of Twins in putting the whole thing together. I'm sorry, I don't have it to play. Where he said initially that sooner or later we are going to have to do away with um, cash and it's going to be digital currencies. But now he's coming back to say, we want to get that from. That is stupid. But he's the one who announced it. Isn't this crazy? Um, is it he who is crazy or we the population? It, it is yes. he. Good question. Now, he says as your prime minister. He's yes. not our prime minister. He's the prime minister of King Charles in Jamaica. He's a state. Prime minister means chief. And the prime minister is appointed as the chief servant of the sovereign, which is the Queen of England in his time, and now the King of England, our son. He's the prime minister of Charles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's not the prime minister of the people of Jamaica. And that's why he, won't, that's why he does not serve the people of Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's serving Charles. And when they, when they act as if they are removing Britain and Charles as sovereign, they don't intend to make the people sovereign. They mm-hmm. intend to make themselves mm-hmm. the state and the state officers sovereign, the mm-hmm. parliament. Mm-hmm. In 1962, they, Bustamante and Manley and Siaga, David Kaur and the rest of them, declared that the, so- the, the parliament is sovereign. Mm-hmm. In England, it is not the king who is sovereign. It is the parliament. The parliament is the, is the elected officials, mm-hmm. the House of Lords, mm-hmm. and the king in conference. Mm-hmm. All of them together is a sovereign. Mm-hmm. It used to be the king alone, or the queen. But after Henry, after um, Cromwell and them time, they might just say that what? It is Parliament that is sovereign. The king is part of, part of Parliament. That's why the Parliament don't home till the king reach in there. That's why the Governor General make throne speech, and mm-hmm. that is what home Parliament. Right. The right. king and the par- But in Jamaica, they have convinced the people, and the PNP has done it more enough. The PNP has been preaching that the Parliament is the highest court in Jamaica. Yeah. There's delusions of grandeur. They're trying to dream of themselves as a house of laws in England and the, and the legal... Mm-hmm. And the um, law committee of the Privy Council. Why, why is it that the the people though remain in such ignorance? Because in Jamaica, yes, because all of what you have said, um, should, the, one assumes that uh, I never learned in school, but I know this is something that should be taught in school. And if you're not teaching school, then you go after you go after it after your own um, critical thinking and and your deep thinking mind. But why do you think that our people have rem- largely remained in ignorance? Rem- um, as it relates to, to, to governance in Jamaica? In, as your previous guest was explaining, from the time of the capture at gunpoint of our people 500 years ago, their transshipment on a prison ship and their deposit in Jamaica by the Spanish, and then 400 years ago by the British, from that time, our people have been kept in ignorance have been, have been forbidden to speak their languages and have been taught English and have been Christianized to keep you in, 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 in ignorance. Mm. Education in the West or any, under any imperialist, even white people, are kept in ignorance. The education system is to keep you in ignorance of what matters to you mm-hmm. and to put you in knowledge of what matters to them, how to be an accountant to count their money, mm-hmm. how to bear arms to protect them, how to drive a train that their people may go to work. Mm-hmm. So the education and training on the imperialism, when other people rule, you know, that's imperialism. When people turn you into an empire, mm-hmm. empires when one set of people capture other people land and incorporate it into their possession, that's an empire. Mm-hmm. When what, it, yes. what is your own thinking uh, about the connection between education and religion in terms of the origin of uh, how we started in 62 and even before that yes. um, and how that has also helped to keep in place the status quo. Religion in Jamaica and in most con- cultures for the entire history of mankind has been a form of education in a certain way. 
So relig the word religious means to regularize and to restrict you in a certain way. To do something that way all the time. I went to, tr I went to um, track training or I went to football training for six months religiously. I mean, I went every day for six months. The word mm -hmm. religious means the same way mm -hmm. continually mm -hmm. without coming out. Mm -hmm. So religion is when you get people together and train their mind one way mm -hmm. in the worship of ideas or of images or, or of people. Mm -hmm. So religion is a form of education. And like, like the so-called secular education, the everyday education of mm -hmm. school, religion train you to have a certain outlook and to be docile to certain people mm -hmm. and to be hostile to other people. Mm -hmm. Religion teaches you to be hostile to others. Mm -hmm. And education teaches you to be hostile to anybody who don't agree with your government, your laws, your king. Mm -hmm. this, this, this marriage between education and religion in, in the schools generally, and you can see it in the textbook. Um, I, I want your, 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 your thinking on this. Um, and also the fact, and I'm not, not sure if you're noticing it, that um, we're seeing where we... When I went to school, we used to sing... Patriotic songs. I can't remember all of them, but we used to sing some patriotic songs. And we used to set a pledge and put our hand on the heart. And if we put our hand in the wrong place, you get marked for the whole day and so on. But now, uh, you know, in the schools, they're singing religious songs. Um, uh, and, and they are now, and they are reading the Bible more and they are saying prayers more. This is, uh, this is different from what I experienced. So I want your comment on that when I, when I come back. A quick break. All right, we're back with you inside of the Africa Forum. It is Running Africa. My very special guest in studio, Bonga Jerry, small broadcaster, historian, and uh, Pan-African. Um, so, Jerry, we're talking about religion in school and how they seem to be married now um, to education, more, more so than when I was going to school, because I know how education started after the enslavement period, uh, during emancipation and so on. A lot of the churches came in and saw that a lot of the churches start, well, schools were started by churches. But there was a time... I think it was in my time, after the whole manly period and so on, that when we went to school, we were now more patriotic, more than religious. But now I see uh, um, we're reverting to, to religion over patriotism. Your thoughts on that? Now, uh, when the economy of the world changes from time to time, but the people who are already strong economically try to move with the changes that they will continue to be the strongest. So when... The Industrial Revolution coming in and capitalism was perfected. The rich and the strong of the world transfer their method of economy from feudalism, where a few control all of the land and the other people work for them and live on the land and the people even belong to them as a landholder. Now the transfer to feudalism is when the rich start to learn how to make machines that can make, can do any type of work and can make anything, machines. And when you perfect those machines, it becomes an industry of making things with machines and labor. Mm. The machine do the hard part of the work and the labor, the person do the intelligent part of the work. Mm -hmm. So that when you perfect those machines now, it became a revolution in industry. The industry wasn't just planting food mm -hmm. by the poor and the rich grab it for themselves mm -hmm. and give them a share crop, a little share crop. Mm -hmm. the, the industry moved from agriculture now to manufacturing mm -hmm. goods and providing services mm -hmm. with machine. Mm -hmm. That now was a revolution you call the industrial revolution. You're changing the way of industry. Mm -hmm. So the rich now transfer the method of economy from feudalism, ownership of land, the ownership of machine and land mm -hmm. and labor. Mm -hmm. So that's the industrial revolution. So when they in, so them try, they always try to change. So in those changes now, they also get a new change where it is easier to get more wealth. Mm -hmm. When you leg or your slave mm -hmm. and make them work for a little wage and you do have to feed them again. So slavery was emancipated partly because we make it expensive and fight and kill them, mm -hmm. but morally because them find out a new method True. of making wealth through machine. And you can leg the slave now and pay them a little money for work along with the machine, and you do have to feed them again. That now is where in the capitalism, capital is head, you know. Capital means head. Capital means you are still the head of things when you have land, 
That is a part of capital London. Land is a capital mm -hmm. item. You have machine, that is capital goods. Mm -hmm. All these mic in here is capital goods. And the computer is capital goods. The land and the, the machine and the building is the next capital goods. Mm -hmm. And cash is there a capital good. So when one person or one group of person own those four things, all they have to do is go to the mass of the population and say, come and labor upon the important thing. You know, important is the machine, the land, and the building important. Capital things is important. You use just labor. Mm -hmm. Come and work. At the end of the week, make you money. You, you're lucky you get anything. I don't owe you nothing. So capital, mm -hmm. when the capital make the goods, when the laborer make the goods with the capital, machine them. The owner of the capital get the goods, send you home with $10 dollar and sell the goods for $10,000. So they might make it, capitalism is a is the most efficient way of making wealth. Feudalism was a way of making wealth, you know, but capitalism is mm -hmm. 10,000 times more efficient, make them wealthier, quicker, and stronger. Mm -hmm. So they change their method of economy from feudalism, land control, to capitalism, the control of machines, land, building, and money. Mm -hmm. Get super rich. They might try, the, the, as you said, the fourth and fifth industrial revolution is making more and more efficient way of making money. And be more, the rich get more powerful, the poor get more numerous, and the pay get less. So them stay in control. Mm -hmm. So now religion. In. So when you let go, when you let go slave, and pay them away. I want to ask you to hold it right there, so Jerry. All right, so we are, Jerry, we are a minute to the Supreme Ventures draw, as you can see. So we're, we're, we're at, you can do something in a minute with the religion. Yeah. Yes. Well, now, colonialism was a method of making money by occupying other people's land, and you reap the money. But them, them learn now, say, so if you come out of the people's land where you occupy, you come out there and make them feel like it's their own person, own personally. You can now extract money from that place and extract goods. Mm -hmm. So you don't occupy the land like a white man in a great house. You go back to England and you make, give them independence and make them feel like they're all right. And them, mm -hmm. them dig up the thing and send go give you extraction. Mm -hmm. So them learn, say, when you leg a country in an independence, you get more out of them. So 62 now, them start teaching, say, we are good from your command. Sing patriotic song. But after 60 years now, when they want to get a docile again, and start back with the religion again. And even Rastafari, them religiousize, religious, religiousize it so much that most of the Rastafari don't want to take political action. And most of the Selassie action was political action. Religion is the opium of the people. I suppose we, yes. can, we, can, we can debate that in African in today's Observer. Kingston, Jamaica. A call has been made for government in the Caribbean to replace monuments of people who enabled slavery and colonialism with memorials in honor of their own citizens who stood against injustice. Well, that's a call they make long time still. All right. Anyway, says so State Minister and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Alanda Terrellong, made the call while speaking on repatriate justice at the United Nations headquarters in New York on Tuesday. And they are quoting him. He said... It behoves us in the Caribbean to erect similar monuments, tear down those monuments of old, and erect new ones. Remove certain colonial names as well from our buildings and our streets, and put new ones forward, so that we are not telling the stories of the oppressors, but telling the stories of our freedom fighters. And, um... All right, so there's more there. You can catch that on the Observer. It's in the Jamaica Observer today. Uh, Jerry Small is my very special guest in studio, broadcaster, historian, and Pan-African. Um, your immediate thoughts on that call from Terry Long, Jerry? Yeah, interesting call. Um, I hope Terry Long is that discerning that he will move the statue of Bustamante. <laughs> um, you know, knowing the history. Most of the young people yes. in the politics, and even the senior people in the party, 60s yes. and 70 years old, yes. do not know half of the history of their parties. I was talking to the General Secretary of PNP and he was not aware that Bustamante was a foundation member of the PNP. Yet he more come straight up PNP. Really? Must know the, yes, yes. He must know them yes. yes. Right. So the importance of history and I've been thinking about that when I'm thinking about Andrew Holness and what he's doing. 
um, and I'm not trying to excuse him. I'm just trying to understand what could be going through his mind. And you know, I, I think he's, uh, these people are possessed by some, yeah, some yeah, demons yeah. of the enslavers. But what came to me is that you, it seems to me as one of the things that should be written into the Constitution is that nobody is supposed to be Prime Minister if you don't know the history of the country exactly. or your history. Because what he's doing is egregious. And it has to be someone who is mindless, soulless, and really a terrible level of ignorance that you do not recognize what you're doing yeah. to the nation. As Ernest Smith said, are we building a nation yeah. or are we building a hut? Um, I, I, I want to go to the phone lines, Jerry, where we have standing by Wilfred Rattigan, former FBI agent, attorney at law. He spoke with us a few weeks ago about the lawsuit that he brought against Kamina Johnson-Smith and uh, two other two other people. Do you remember the two other entities? One's the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, and, uh, all right, let me, he, he'll tell us. And But I know that there's some development in that area. Mr. Wilfred Rattigan, thank you so much for joining us inside of the Africa Forum once more. Welcome to the space. Hello, good morning, and uh, good morning also to... My brother, family have chosen. Bongo Jerry. Thank you very much, uh, Will Rattigan and Wagwan. And, and apart from being an FBI agent of experience and an attorney, you are a Jamaican, foremost Jamaican. Foremost about it. Yes. Indeed. Which uh, is very uh, important. Which is very important um, to, no, to, to note, especially against the background of the, the lawsuit that you brought against Kamina Johnson-Smith. Um, so we had a conversation with you about this and why you did. But for those who didn't hear, use a minute to remind us of what this lawsuit is, why you brought it, and then let us talk about the latest developments. Right. The lawsuit is in the spirit of accountability and good governance and transparency in principles that have been that have been proclaimed by the government. And it was brought to show that there were breaches of the Financial Administrative and Audit Act and also Circular 17, uh, Administrative Regulation of the Ministry of Finance. In that, the Honorable Minister, Kamina Johnson-Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade with a responsibility for diaspora and Council of Affairs, did not account for a gift of services in the amount of 99,000 U.S. dollars uh, paid by a corporate Jamaica to Finn Partners in New York to provide uh, consultancy services for her campaign to become Secretary General of the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. And she should have done so, she should have done so with the Ministry of Finance, with the Integrity Commission, and with the Tax Administrator of Jamaica. And now we have evidence that, well, first of all, we got evidence that she didn't file with mm -hmm. the Ministry of Finance and Public uh, Service. Mm -hmm. But now and, and you, and you, done, sorry, and you, and you talked us through this last, through this last time to say that you followed um, all of the, the the possible evidence chain that you could possibly follow, and you you are convinced that, as an attorney, that this was not done. Right, so so we've been through that, and then the, so the court case was when the court case uh, was filed. I think it was last month. I have to go back and look at the date. Yeah, but well, um, no, it was filed in or June. I think it was filed in April, mm -hmm. like late April, because they gave us like five weeks before the hearing, mm -hmm. and the hearing was last week Monday. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, and. Was, uh, out of the hearing now, and I've been seeing you, watching you across the social media, even on your own um, YouTube uh, blog, where you talk about this court case. So uh, help us to understand it in this, in, in this space, because there is a response now. Last time we were very concerned as to whether or not she would respond and, uh, you know, how, what that would be. But now you have a response because the hearing was uh, last week or so. All right, so anything new you glean there? Yeah, lots of things. Mm -hmm. Remember when we last spoke and I said to you that I, she, didn't, she didn't comply with the regulations right. 
uh, as far as filing with the Ministry of Finance. And he said to me, well, it's alleged. And I said to you, no, Cabo, this is no allegation. Mm. It's, I have direct evidence. And, and I said to you, I have a letter from the Ministry saying that she, they couldn't find any documentation evidencing her filing or her compliance with the, with the rules and, 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 and the law. Mm-hmm. And uh, since then, we've had the hearing, and she was forced to file a motion to dismiss the case. Mm-hmm. Now, when you do that, you have to supply an affidavit. Now, we haven't heard from the minister since last June after her defeat. Uh, the first time we heard from her, she made a statement after her defeat saying that God didn't want her, she guessed God didn't want her to leave Jamaica right now. And that was the end of that. So, <laughs> no, 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 I interviewed her. I interviewed her at, um, at, at Seville Great House. But 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 I, I, we couldn't quote her because I think she was really stumped. I don't know if you were there, Jerry, because I, the first she, question... She, she, she never said anything. Somebody else came in and started to talk to her because she never said yes, anything. Yes, 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 Jerry. So, so, so I asked her, I said, why did you allow yourself to be used? Because I honestly believe that she was used um, in a very cruel way. By, by Boris by, Johnson. By Boris Johnson and, and, and Andrew Holness. Yes, yes. And um, so, so that, and, and this is why... I must tell you, I have sympathy for her, you know, a holy per sympathy, more than you would think. Because I, I, you know, as a, firstly as a woman, but then again, somebody who has been used to the extent that she's been used. And I, and I, I when I asked her the question, I'm telling you the truth, I saw in her eyes that she was hurt by it, that uh, she never, her emotions were open, Jerry, for, for all of us there to see. They exposed her. They exposed her in a cruel way and I saw in her eyes that this is something that hurt her. Um, but obviously she has to go out and say, but anyway, she's the one that gets sued and it is such a pity because so much more did they sue. But anyway, <laughs> go on. Go on. May, 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 go I, on point, may yeah. I point out one thing? Yeah. Mr. Rattigan probably already remembers. Yeah. She is the minister responsible for diaspora affairs. Yes. And they are disputing that Mr. Ratigan has no interest, no proper interest in this case, and he's a member of the diaspora. All right, and I know that, and that is why you, you'd ask the question up front, so what is important is that he is, is Jamaican. All right, so take our listeners um, in this space who don't know what has happened yet, um, Mr. Ratigan. So the affid- in the, within the affidavit, tell us about the, the major points that um, are of concern to you. Okay. The, the, the major point, and there are, and I shouldn't say point, because points, um, mm. lots of them. Mm-hmm. The first one to me is that she said that I have no standing. Um, I don't have sufficient interest in the case. And the reason for that is because I live abroad. Mm-hmm. So the message... And keep in mind that this is a minister that's responsible for diaspora affairs. And she had a meeting with the diaspora last week about regular business, right? You know, and she, they're saying that, <laughs> yeah, so they're saying that he doesn't, this, this guy, you know, he, he doesn't live here. And so he has no interest in this matter. Now, the message on a broader level is that if you live abroad, don't leave Jamaica alone when it comes to corruption and, and, and malfeasance and failure to file, failure to comply with rules, mm-hmm. you know, government officials. Just leave that alone because we in Jamaica, we can't deal with it. You, you don't have sufficient interest in this matter. Meanwhile, they have a meeting saying, we need you to ex- you know, express your interest by by contributing, whether financially or bring your, bring your, um, bring your services to Jamaica, and they are mm-hmm. engaged with the diaspora on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. in a constructive way. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to dealing with this matter now, with, with, where you have to hold them accountable in court, they're saying if you want to hold us accountable in the public, in the public, in, in media, or whatever, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But when you start with the court now, that's a different level. Is, that, is, is that a valid, is that a valid um, defense? Is, a, is it a valid point? I hear what you're saying, but it does she... Valid. It, 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 it is valid because under the Constitution, I'm a Jamaican citizen. Okay, so, 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 so that can be dismissed. Yeah, but the fact that she, she said it, yeah, yeah, is concerning. Yeah, go ahead, Jerry. That's that's even worse. Yeah. Now, here's a, here's, a, here's, a, here's an interesting point that she also raised. She said mm-hmm. everything that I complained about in my complaint, uh, uh, that it has been fully, fully addressed in Parliament. No, that's a lie. That's a lie because the person who spoke in Parliament about this case was none other than Minister Nesta Morgan. 
Yeah. Well, Mr. Morgan. Minister of Misinformation, yes. No, the Minister of Feathering of Nest. <laughs> Minister of Misinformation. I call him a flying monkey and, and, them, and them write all the company. <laughs> but he's, because they don't understand what a flying monkey is. No, 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 I've watched that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. We're, we're, we're going off on a thing because what you mentioned Robert Morgan's name and we have a thing. So, anyway, so, so. Yes. Let me just, let me just yes. mention. Let me just show you a connection. Right? Yes. Yes. When you here's here's one of her primary, one of her pri, well, not one of her primary argument is that the ninety nine thousand dollars was a gift to Jamaica. It was not a gift to her, and she said, and I can read her her her, her statement. She said here, she said, uh, I derived no benefit from either the funds expended by the Jamaican government or from the private sector. It was the Jamaican government that derived the benefit of consultancy services towards its campaign to have me, its candidate, elected as a Commonwealth Secretary General. And she said, she said um, that she, is, she received no benefit. Yeah, I but let me ask you, let me ask you because there's some obfuscation. Um, so the way this was done, and we were asking the questions here, the way this was done, it, it, it muddled the minds of people, you know, because one, it appeared as if it was personal on Kamina's part and Andrew, like they must set up lending with Boris, but they made it a Jamaican government thing. So, it, do you understand the point I'm making? So, is it, is it, is it, is it she or is it the Jamaican government? Well, let me address that, 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 that part, because remember, there are two funding streams, one from the Jamaican government and one from private concerns. Yes. Here's what she said in paragraph is, it is further in the public domain that the public relations work done by two partners in which that work was paid for by private money. Mm -hmm. She said, oh, in fact, she said, it is it's further in the public domain that the public relations work done by two partners was paid for by third parties who were in support of a Jamaican government-sponsored activity. Mm -hmm. And so at no time, Mm -hmm. Did I receive any gift in either my personal or official capacity? Mm. She said she received no gift in either capacity. So what she said is the, the gift was to the Jamaican government. No, there's a big problem with that. Mm -hmm. Because when you give a gift to the Jamaican government, you have to go through the Ministry of Finance and there's a very structured procedure to do that. But private concerns in Jamaica didn't do that. They scratched the rules and went straight to New York and paid to, and paid not paid money to say. Mm -hmm. By the way, we don't know who actually paid for it. Mm -hmm. We don't know who actually paid for it, and we don't know how many people made the contributions because Minister Morgan only gave us three names. Yes. Muslim Group, Grace Kennedy, and, and Keith Duncan. And when asked, is, is that a comprehensive list? The answer was no, there are other people. But he said, I suspect that they wouldn't want their names to be mentioned. Mm -hmm. And then he was asked, what were the contributions? How much money each person, and then he didn't give that either. Right. And, they went, and they never talked about her, her, her filing. Mm -hmm. So when she said everything regarding this, this, this Rattigan's complaint was addressed in Parliament, she's lying. Mm -hmm. that's not lying. That's yeah, yeah, that's not true. We all, we, all, we all know that that is not true. So it seems as if she herself... Yeah, everything, everything yes. come up. Mm -hmm. When she partners, when she, she's saying the government got the gift, it, mm -hmm. it, she didn't get any benefit at all. Mm -hmm. No. That's kind of curious because if you look at her interviews, if you look at more than interviews, and yeah. if you look at these documents, it's clear what's going on here because she's saying it, the government benefited from this. Mm -hmm. And when you go back and look at the August interview that, that, that Minister um, Morgan did with Nationwide Interview, he distanced the government from this. He said the government had nothing to do with this. This was a private matter between company X and company Y. And mm -hmm. then when you go to Finn Partners, Finn Partners said our client was none other than Camilla Johnson Smith. Okay. So and regardless she, of how it looked, mm -hmm. regardless of the smoke and mirrors, um, what we heard from, from the Minister of Misinformation and what we what you heard from your in, through your investigations from Finn is that she is a person who who got exactly. this or who received this. Exactly. All right. So well, so one so, other thing, Carlo, mm -hmm. one other thing. Yes. If, if, if you get the document, the film part of the document, section four, it says who is your who, who is your basically who is your client? Yes. And the answer the answer there is Camina Johnson Smith. Then you go to section seven. Section seven said is is oh who's your principal? It says Camina Johnson Smith. Section seven is your principal A. First box government. They didn't check that. They 
went all the way down to the very last box. And what does it say there? Individual. They check that. Mm -hmm. And then the question is asked, what's the nationality of the individual? They put Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is that our client is Camila Johnson-Smith, who's a Jamaican national. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've heard you... Well, Jerry, sorry, you wanted to, to raise a point. Now, the government of Jamaica... Recently, before they made the astounding announcement that they are tripling hundreds of people pay primarily, doubling and tripling primarily the Prime Minister of the King of England in Jamaica, Andrew Wallace. Just before that, a couple of weeks, they announced that they are doubling the pay of the judiciary because they have some special work for the judiciary to do for them mm -hmm. in their favor. You remember when they were appointing the, the chief justice to act as chief justice and wholeness that and the, uh -huh, he yes. had the temerity yes. to talk in front of wholeness in King's House. I yes. am putting you there to act and he's and he's smirking when he's talking and the camera has it. Yes. Smirking at the chief justice, the acting yes. chief justice. I'm saying I'm putting you there to yes. act and I'll be watching you. Yes. And if you perform properly, yes. I might yeah. appoint your chief justice. Yeah. And he call, he called them in that way. I know they, and this is why I talk about they, Louis XIV. He's, he's been coming for a long time. This man is a total yes. dictator. He's authoritarian. Uh, he is what he is, you yes. know. And he doesn't understand yes. um, the whether you, you think there's democracy, yes or no, but there is a system in place. He doesn't have an understanding of that system, you know. No, no just, like, just like how Siaga coached him to, to demand uns, undated letters of resignation from each senator mm -hmm. that he could fire them. Yes if they decided to agree to a Caribbean Court of Justice. Right. So with so all those constitutional breaches, yeah. it still continue. But yeah. let me ask you, why did you raise the point then of, um, of, of the judges? Because in relation just, just to like how they had a, 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 a Democ Democles sword hanging over um, Brian Sykes' head, so it is that the lady assigned to the case to hear Mr. Rattigan's uh, right to have an interest in this case and so on, immediately recused herself. Is that so, Mr. Rattigan? Yes. And, and the one who replaced her immediately says she don't know enough about this thing. She have to learn more. But she immediately started to disqualify Mr. Rattigan. So, so, so make we take a... a no, no. We, we can, so, uh, help us to understand that. So, <laughs> hey, what, what? It's a, yes. So, 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 so did the first the judge assigned first to the case? Did she recuse herself, as far as you know? Well, here's what happened. The On what basis? The judge took the bench last week, mm -hmm. uh, Monday, mm -hmm. and that judge, um, Andrea Pettigrew Collins, she, as soon as she got on the bench, she said, "Listen, I was given this case forty minutes ago. I don't. I haven't read it. I don't know what the issues are." Now, this is a case that's been pending now uh, for the past four or five weeks, right? And it's gotten a lot of uh, 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 media attention. And you think something like this where a, a, a minister is mm -hmm. so, in her official capacity yeah. that something like this would have gotten some serious attention. Mm -hmm. But this judge, Andrea Pettigrew Collins, she said she just got it 40 minutes before uh, sitting on the bench and that she hadn't read it mm -hmm. and that she didn't know what issues were. And right after that, she said, well, I can see where there might be an issue here regarding standing. Okay. Explain, uh, explain what okay. is standing. Yes. Explain what is standing, please, sir. Explain what is standing. Standing is the ability to bring a case in Jamaica. It is, you know, having an interest in the matter. For example, if I watch, if I watch a car accident, I, 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 and, I, and I go ahead and file a, a, a claim, then this means it because you say you are standing, you want a party, you, you, you don't have any interest in the matter, right? Mm -hmm. And that, 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 yeah, and your case will be right at this point. In this mm -hmm. case, I have an interest as a Jamaican as mm -hmm. to how the government is functioning based on its mm -hmm. proclamation of fairness, mm -hmm. good transparency, good governance, etc. Mm -hmm. Every Jamaican has an interest in what the government is doing. So, so, so that the judge, so that the judge, so that the judge, I'm sorry to interrupt, so that the judge who is getting the case for the first time in just a few um, hours before um, the hearing, who doesn't have any information, can't, can't really do anything as far as this is concerned right now, is seeing that there's an immediate problem, and that problem is that you, Wilfred Rattigan, 
um, you don't have no right to bring this case because you don't come from here. But this is pre-judice, pre-judging mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. early before you even Even though you don't know anything. Yeah. So, so... And maybe you are tipped off. Maybe you are tipped off. Right. So how that go? I want to remind them, though, that, that the, the dollar store sends home approximately $3.8 billion would that be U.S. dollars to Jamaica in... Mm-hmm. In 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 uh, um, taxes and, and 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 so on and so forth. But at the end, at the end of the day, though, this is this is also a case for the diaspora to be watching very very closely, to because of what has been said already and by the judge, and also because of what we we find in the in the affidavit or the the Minister of Foreign Affairs on, on standing. So both of them saying the very same thing. So I think the diaspora should be watching this very, very closely. All right, because it's out there on another court and we know how the courts work. So so the other thing, though, is... Um, so, 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 so she's not able to, to look at this at all right now. Obviously, there must be a new date. So when is the next date? The next date is... The next date is um, the judge... Um, uh, succumbed to the wishes of the of the defense and said that they wanted to move it to um, September to decide whether or not the case should be dismissed. And I oh. told them that no. I said let's move it to October. Um, let's move it to October because um, I have some things I'm working on, um, some bombshell things, and and that that gonna blow this case wide open more than it is already. And I will get I will get possession of those documents before October. So she's uh, asking for the something. right. So, so so they're asking for the case to be dismissed because you have no standing. And right, right, among other things, right. among other things. Mm-hmm. But, but let me just say this to your to your listening audience and 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 I did, uh, um, Bunga Jerry as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is something coming. There's something coming next week, and uh, uh, regarding the same case, another bombshell. She will be in court again pretty soon. Watch, watch this case. She again? So what, about, again. So, so what about Andrew? I mean, he's he, he not have no case yeah, to answer in this, in this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Look, 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 look what's going on. He started a foundation, right? And the foundation is called One Jamaica Legal Defense Foundation. And mm-hmm. the purpose of it is to use the money to hold government accountable in court and on the public relations scene, but yeah. in Jamaica and outside of Jamaica. You know, and I want to ask you, all right, so if, tell us how we can get, um, or people can contribute to the foundation, and then I want to ask you one quick, quick question, even though we, we, we need for, uh, to, right. to go. Yeah. The foundation, we're waiting on, all the people have been approved except one. We're waiting for the IRS to declare a uh, grant of tax exempt status, so that if you... Especially if you're in America and you make a contribution, you can write it off your taxes. Tell, and then we're going to yeah, move tell, on. Tell, tell, them, tell, them tell them what IRS is now. Uh, the Internal Revenue Service. Um, they Tax. Make, they're one of the most powerful agencies in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't fool around with them. Yes. So we're crossing our feet and we're dotting our eyes with them. And we're waiting for them, for them to give us that status. Once they do, yes. we open up the bank account, we have an audit on board, and then people can start making their contributions. Yeah. But, and I'll keep you posted on that. Yes. That should happen within a, within a few weeks. Hold a sec, because especially because of what we are talking about. Hold on, what we're talking about. Let me take this break. <laughs> the... Uh, the 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 minister of foreign affairs reports to the prime minister. What is the prime minister's responsibility in all of this? Is he? And I hear you talk about the money just now, but just off the top of your head, he he has made a lot of statements. You know, he said he had he, he's the one who approached. Her. If you look, that, that statement is out there. Am I wrong, Jerry? Mm-hmm. I so him asked the minister um, to do this, and he's the one. Who, for us, um, watching this closely, he was the one who drove this. In, 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 this minister was acting on the uh, command of the prime minister. So, uh-huh. what is the prime minister's culpability or responsibility? You understand the question I'm asking? Yes, and 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 they, they they specifically chose her because she's a woman. And they were trying to unseat Baroness Scotland right. for Johnson. They were doing a job for Boris Johnson. Right. Him, the man 
Holness doing a job for Boris Johnson yes. uses a woman to fight against Boris Johnson's opponent, right. a woman, Barney Scotland. Yes. So turn two Caribbean women against each other. Yeah. Two Caricom women against each other. And matter of fact, they tried they turn against the rest of Caricom. The rest of Caricom was back in Scotland. Yes. And Jamaica alone deferred. Yes. Deferred. Yes. So so there was a consensus. There was a consensus in Caricom that Caricom would support Barney Scotland. Right. And uh, about a month after that, Jamaica decided that they were going to put, put up uh, the minister, and it caused a rift right. in Scotland in Caricom. So ten countries yes. voted for vote, ten countries said they would vote for Scotland. Five said they would vote for they would vote for the minister. Now, look, two quick things. The man took him, but it, ca- it caused a rift in Africa too. Because Africa was supposed to be yeah. the next one up. So 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 yeah. what yeah. Jamaica did was Cabo. Yes. Cabo, them two people like that, you know, listen. I'm telling you. Scotland because of COVID, she went into a second term without an election. So she right. was serving because you only supposed to serve four right. with with, uh, with an option to, to to run for a second term, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. she had gone six years. What she did, she said, Listen, I'm in my second term. So I'm when it's an election. I'm only gonna I'm only gonna sit here for if elected to run for two more years. Right, right. right. Then Jamaica candidate come up and say, Oh, I wanna serve one year. Africans they think Africa people African people are that the Arrogant, you know. Arrogant. Arrogant. I'm telling you that that, that this the, the, these people up in the in the synagogue of Satan, which is the Parliament of Jamaica, are very arrogant, especially the Prime Minister Andrew Holness, the most arrogant of all in him dunceness. You know, this is the thing that bothers me. Pin, you mean Pinocchio? Yes. But 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 the African them look at it. The African look at it and say, okay, if we wait for Baroness, we have two years and then we get the chair. Africa was so always going to it. vote against. And don't we saying this? Uh. We who have sense and was in contact with Africa knew that even if Africa was saying up front and wanting that, we knew they were going. We knew she wasn't going to win. We knew that. That is why we never have nobody in a, in a Rwanda. You notice yeah. all the media was there. We never have nobody down there because it was a shame to even go down there in the first place. Uh, um, and Rwanda and Kagame were recruited to help the same Boris Johnson and Britain, and they took the prison that Cameron was offering some years ago. Rwanda isn't even part uh, of the Commonwealth. Imagine Rwanda became he applied. An, imagine Rwanda. Yes. Not the people of Rwanda, you know. The Prime Minister, yes. the President of Rwanda yes. applied to enter into British Commonwealth yes. to, so that he may serve Boris Johnson and the and Chamber co- and Company. Yes, yes. And the Chamber, yes. So, um, so two quick points. Quickly, and, two and, and, quick and points. look it up. Yes. Two quick points. One yes. is, I urge you and your listening audience to go to the Beaner today. There's a lead story on me and a lead story on the lawsuit. Um, me, my personal capacity. Okay, all right. So I didn't. I have gone to the Glean all morning. Speak yes. about this. Jamaica, Jamaica spent over forty-four million dollars for this candidacy, right? And think about it. Boris Johnson convinced Jamaica to put up forty-something million dollars and put up a field candidate, and Jamaica not get nothing in return. Don't think so. People think about that. Somebody come and tell you, say, no, you put up your candidate and you spend your money, and we're not doing nothing. You find the money. Yeah, you find the money. So right. Well, let us follow. Let us follow the money. At the same time, we're finding the money because there are a lot of things that are happening here now on the island. That no matter how people tear up them here and march and turn up in front of the the, the, the minister of Ministry of Finance and ask Nigel, where are you? People still getting two hundred and three hundred and one hundred and and two hundred and fourteen and two hundred and thirty percent salary increase. Is it gone? So the question is, did they all get their salary increases uh, at the end of the month? By the way, did the prime minister get him salary increase? It, it was already enacted. Mm-hmm. So 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 where the money come from? We well, we're it come say- from the tax that we paid. I cement every I cement. Are we sure about month. that? The money? Yeah. If the uh, money come from the tax No, no more all money. You think you think they get foreign grant? To, you don't know. May I ask because they don't could not. I was couldn't afford money. The money. Uh, yes, man. Yeah, well, well middle life is see all of the China tra- trade documents them and what happened with Commonwealth and all the things because I cannot believe I honestly beg, call me naive I don't believe this is taxpayers' money, but anyway. So what's what's the other point you're making? Oh, that, that, the, the, two point, the one point was we didn't think about it The second one was 
was they were, it, it appeared as if at the very least they were conned by Britain and other countries. Because in her interview, you know, she said, when they asked her, well, why did you want, why did you make a photo of a candidate? She said, because we were approached by other countries. And they said, we, 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 we in the countries. She wouldn't. So we were not, we were not approached them must have given them something because I cannot understand for the life of me why a government will... Boris Johnson gave them something, but you have to understand that what was happening in, in England at the time, neither the monarchy nor Boris Johnson, who was the prime minister at the time, want Bar- Baroness Scotland oh. in place. They, because uh, she's a danger to them. Yes, they both want her out. And plus, uh, no, just, it, and it wasn't free. So, so it wasn't free. It was not free. Don't forget um, that last month we had the foreign secretary of Britain come down and give her money but to help disaffected youth. You know. remember, I remember last year when they took me in from the vice president of the U.S. to do the same thing. I wouldn't know where the money they got. We need to, you see, there's, there's, there's a dirt of investigative journalism. Something stink in the state of Denmark. Rotten to the Rotten. core. Thank you so um, much. <laughs> I invite you back to the, to the, to the program. Just to let our listeners know that you now have your, you now have your podcast. Yes, sir. And, and um, um, Ratigan Live. Check him out on YouTube. Thank you so Reason much. Reason with Ratigan. Yeah. Reason with Ratigan. Yeah. Reason with Ratigan. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. All the best. You know, Jerry, um, I, 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 you know, I, I respect you a whole lot, and I will just give way to you on this. You say it's taxpayer money, and if you say it's taxpayer money, I, I will consider it. But I've never for one minute considered that it was taxpayer money, you know. I've always been thinking that. The way that they're digging in their heels on this thing, and the slush fund that they seem to have, nobody with a heart. This is um, one of Nigel Clark's 40, who I has been chosen, you know. Mm. He's coming from the private sector, mm. very experienced in those matters. This whole matter is an next manat affair, you know. Remember what the thing mm. about manat? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Jamaica go, the, the, the yeah. Jamaica go, the Jamaica administration, mm-hmm. because they are not a government, you know. They are an administration. The administration of Bruce Golden hired manat to look after their interests. Manat Phelps and Phillips. And so on and so on. But mm-hmm. we, did, we weren't told this up front. And we didn't, right. you know, the people in Manat started doing it. That's why that inquiry and all those things right. made people understand not only how Jamaican politics work, but how lobbyism works in the mm-hmm. U.S. system, which is mm-hmm. part of their official system, lobbyism. Mm-hmm. And it is legitimate, and you may do this, and you may do that, and so on. Mm-hmm. And... Um, so many things we have learned and yeah. found out. And thank God for WikiLeaks on that too. Yes, um, so much more behind the scenes. But um, you have been, uh, you know, I, I don't know anyone in Jamaica who is more um, knowledgeable than you when it comes to our contemporary history and otherwise, but, but particularly because we're talking about this. Some aspects of it, yeah. yeah. Um, so that you've been watching Jamaican politics for... For, for a long time, and, and you're able to to connect the dots in a way that not many of us can can do. We can only hope to do that. And I want you to help us to connect the dots to where we are, are today. How come we are at this point? Um, highest crime rate you can ever think of in the world. Um, we, we, we're number two in terms of the most murderous country in the world. We're 30% on the index of equi- equity. That means, say, um, we and Haiti and, and some, of the, some of the other countries, Central African Republic and so on, we're at the same place. And so, so you have that. Then you also have um, poverty at the... At, at, we have never, we've never seen this kind of poverty. We've always been poor. A lot of, lot of we poor. But we have never experienced this kind of poverty that we are seeing now. We are driven into poverty in a way, a rate at which we cannot understand. And yet at the same time, we have... Um, uh, a political party which is heading the, the government now, um, the, the, the GLP, who make mistake time and time and time and time again. And sometimes, it, it, to me, it appears now it's no longer a mistake, it's deliberate. How did we get to this place where the people are so passive in the face of the greatest oppression and injustice, watching a, a, a group of people feather them bed? with 300% increases of taxpayers' money and barely doing anything about it. Help us to connect the dots back to... What does, how did we get to this space? The people of Jamaica, the population of Jamaica has been taught 
that their lawyer in politics is the opposition. So the majority of the people usually be confident that if the, if the administration, not the government, you know, if the administration is doing anything wrong, the opposition will be the lawyer of the people and the investigator um, detecting things and, and representing them. Mm-hmm. Now they have found out in the last two decades mm-hmm. that the opposition, the, the, um, the JLP was in opposition for nearly 20 years. Yes. And they were not representing the people like what a, a lawyer or a watchdog. There were no watchdog against the PNP. Now that the JLP has, are back in government mm-hmm. administration since 2007, they had an interruption with Portia from 2012 to 16. They are back there. Mm-hmm. They have won two elections so far. They came in with a 39-year-old prime minister who has like 40 more years political life, 39 up to 79, it would be, you know, that would be 40 years. It looked like a person who could easily break the 20-year record with 40 years to go at least half of that, him could have all the thing. And in the meantime, the PNP has been in more and more shambles every step of the way. P.J. Patterson warned the people of Jamaica that one thing about him, other prime minister, don't want go, I mean, um, opposition leader Siaga don't want to go even when he can't win election. But when my time comes to go, nobody will have to tell me to go. Remember, PJ always boasts of that, that he have mm-hmm. sensitivity mm-hmm. and he will go. Well, when he saw the JLP call Bruce Golden back into the party from the NDM to be joint leader with Siaga in 2002, and it was the closest election 2002 in the history of Jamaica, with, with Bruce Golden jointly leading the party, and then Siaga left two, three years later, uh, two and a half years later, and left it to Bruce Golden. Mm-hmm. And with the most popular prime minister in the history of Jamaica, Portia Simpson Miller, Bruce Golden started to give the PNP a run for them. The JLP under Bruce Golden started to give the PNP a run for their money. And finally overturned the PNP and Portia through the traffic guru thing. But PJ saw it coming. And from 2004, PJ started making arrangements that he will not face a Bruce Golden in a head-to-head leadership race with Bruce, um, in an election. Hold it right there. All right, we're back with you inside of the Africa Forum. This is Running Africa and, and Jerry Small, broadcaster, a historian, Pan-African, uh, in the studio with us this morning as we try to understand um, all the various issues or the various challenges that we are faced with as um, black people in Jamaica, especially in recent times. So, Jerry, you're, you're helping us to connect the dots as to why we are where we are now. You talked about Mr. Patterson's um, rec- recognition of the fact that Bruce Golden would be a, 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 an opponent, a, a, formidable. <laughs> a formidable opponent for him. So um, take it from there, because you're saying that. So when when the election election time, he stepped out, I suppose that's where yeah, you're he, at, yeah? he knew that he would vacate before the 2007 yeah. election, and he set up the succession race between Portia and Peter Phillips, knowing that Portia would win the presidency of the party. Anyway, since 1989, the people of Jamaica have more come to realize that the opposition, which is a, the opposition is a part of the government. The people of Jamaica have come to understand that the opposition is a part of the government in Jamaica constitution. The administration is the party that wins most, the wins the election. And the second, the party that comes second in the election becomes the opposition, and two of them make up the government. Mm-hmm. The people of Jamaica have come to realize that the opposition in Jamaica since 1989 is not any watchdog for them, and therefore support has been withdrawn from any opposition, whether JLP or PNP, so much so that the last election that was held in 2021, hot percentage of the people of Jamaica refrained from voting. 67%, more than two-thirds. So it's not that the people of Jamaica are despondent. It's that they recognize that the, the PNP is not their lawyer. Just like how they recognized before that the JLP and the Siaga is not their lawyer. And that's why the PNP got four terms. Mm-hmm. So the people of Jamaica are in a mode now where they are reassembling and assessing mm-hmm. the political expression that they wish to take. And the, people, the, major, the largest group of Jamaican people are disaffected with both the JLP and the PNP. Mm-hmm. And we will nationalize Jamaica. Mm-hmm. 
Jamaica was not, was not a nation in 1962 when it was handed to the PNP and JLP. For the mm. first time, the people of Jamaica are going to make a nation. The population of Jamaica yeah. are going to nationalize Jamaica, turn Jamaica into a nation by refusing to be subject to the PNP and the JLP by constitutional arrangement. That was mm. what was happening, mm. and the people realized. Talk about constitutional arrangement. The direction in which the so-called constitutional reform is going now, and I said so-called deliberately because yeah. I have my own views on it, um, do you think, uh, uh, to what extent do you think that this will uh, change anything? Uh, uh, is it a situation of the more things change, the more they remain the same? The more things change, the more they remain the same is an expression of cosmetic change. In other words, you decide that you're not wearing braids today, you're going to wear jerry curls. Or you decide you're not going to wear a ring on this hand, you're going to wear a ring on that hand. But everybody knows that it's Cabo. Mm-hmm. So the cosmetic change that took place in 1962, the people were fooled. Mm-hmm. But now, the people are not fooled. They know that all they want to do is remove the monarchy as head of state and to put wholeness as head of state and head of government, our wholeness will appoint the head of state. Mm-hmm. In other words, the prime minister will appoint the prime minister with support will appoint the the ceremonial head of state, but that ceremonial head of state will be subject to the prime minister, like what the prime minister pointed out to the public when he appointed Brian Sykes to act, to mm-hmm. humiliate him mm-hmm. and to make him say toe the line. Mm-hmm. And I will make you the permanent chief justice. The, the people ta- of Jamaica. Le- and this will come back to Henry, the, um, to, to, to Louis XIV. The ta- the the s- 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 I am the state, and I the, am state the state is state. me. And the state is me. So yeah. because This is where we are. No, but this is a dangerous place. Of Not course, just for him, but yeah. for, for the nation. Yes, no, the nation that is about to be. This is a, this is a, this is a, this is a, um, this is a fake nation, you know. Jamaicans are real. And they perform at the Olympics, they perform in music, they perform in brains, they perform in work. It's a population. Jamaica is a population. Yeah, we yes. are a people. Jamaica yes. is a people, it's not a nation. We are about to nationalize Jamaica, the land of Jamaica. Just like how they're taking away the beaches and the land, we are about to take it back. And that is what is nationalizing it. We are going to make Jamaica into a nation, not just a land. I feel like I agree with you. I, 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 I think this is where we're heading. How uh, uh, so we see another situation happening at the same time. Help me tell me if I'm just reaching for uh, touching at straws. Yes, because so we see a situation where Iraqi Mead has um, it, uh, against everything as it now is Brigadier you know, General or Major General Iraqi Mead. We also see a situation where um, the the police commissioner. Uh, it doesn't. I, I have never seen, and, and we see a lot of things here, but I, I can't. The, 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 the crime and the violence and the wickedness and the murder and the rape and, the, and, and all of the, 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 the criminality happening on the island, and there's hardly any outcry against the commissioner of police or the, or the minister of national security. Yeah. There is no outcry against the minister of national security, against the prime minister against the head of the police or the head of the army. Why? Because they are not upset. They are concerned about the crime, but they are not upset by it. They know it cannot upset them because they are on top of it. The crime is below them. Rocky Mead, the prime minister, the, the whole country realized from the 31st of December 2001 and 21 that the Prime Minister wants Rocky Mead very close in the government. He retired from headship of the army, and the Prime Minister tried to insert him into the cabinet. The rules were that no one may be cabinet secretary who is not coming out of the civil service. Rocky Mead was not a civil servant, and they were defeated in his dictatorial attempt to install Rocky Mead in the government. Now, he, he has get advice from other people, both local and foreign, how to do it, in disregarding the people of Jamaica, by appointing Rocky Mead, the, 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 the brigadier general, what a major general, 
not only to be major general and still in control of the army, that lady who is there is just a front piece. Rocky Maid, still in control of the army, is now also ambassador plenipotentiary. What even, does that mean? Even higher than ambassador, foreign minister, or any of the ambassadors in the world for Jamaica. What kind of plenty powers? Plenipotentiary. Plenty means full, and potentiary means powers. He has full powers wider than any other ambassador, wider than any Jamaican minister and cabinet. He can go abroad and represent Jamaica without even consulting Wallace because he's an emergency controller of Jamaica who can go outside and even call down forces to come and take back the government of Jamaica if the people of Jamaica decide to sweep away wholeness and golden Do you without that? violence. If the people of Jamaica decide to sweep away wholeness and golden and company without violence, Rocky Mead can go gather up help from abroad political, economic, and military, and, and dissemble. In other words, tell a wrong tale that, that is, a, is a coup and a violent thing going on in Jamaica and contrive things like Haiti. Full powers. All right, so, so it, is, it, is, it is a serious point you're making, and, and we note carefully that you're not, you're not saying that this is going to happen or that Rocky Mead is going to do that. Full pause. But, but that because of the powers that he's been granted, yeah. this is a likely scenario, yeah. um, or one of them that... that is that, an that, emergency that, 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 break. Now, what, to what, what can we learn... From IT, because there's, I, I, I know that on the island here in Jamaica, there's a lot of misconception about what's happening in IT because, mm. because people buy into the Western media um, propaganda. But what, uh, knowing the truth of what's happening in IT, what can we learn and how close are we as, uh, in Jamaica today to that situation that led to the condition that IT finds itself in now? Like IT, which is people call Haiti, the people of Jamaica, the forcible, we were forcibly made the people of Jamaica by gunpoint and enslavement. The people of Jamaica were intent on throwing off the Great Britain and freeing ourselves, even before American independence. The people of Haiti, with help from Jamaica, because the two populations were connected, and the, and the, two, the two political struggles were interchangeable, they went back and forth. The people of Haiti successfully threw off France, their colonial oppressors, imperialist oppressors. They threw off France. They defeated France you know, militarily and freed themselves. But this is a black freeing and African freeing of a population and the claiming of a land. A black republic successfully carried out. The white republics and empires and empires could not tolerate that. So certain forces came to the assistance of France and crushed Haiti, Haiti and extracted reparation from Haiti. Haiti had to repay from Remember, you know, if Haiti def- defeat France politically and militarily, France couldn't demand no money from them. You know. it, was, it was their powers, imperialist powers, who said we can't afford a white country, a great, a great white power, to be crushed by an island of African people. Otherwise, it going to spread right through the islands and spread through Africa. So those powers came together, crushed down the new revolution in Haiti, and extracted reparations for hundreds of years now. Haiti has been paying back France what it cost them to let go Haiti. Hold the point there. We'll take a quick break and pick up right there, sir, because we want to talk a little bit about the phantom of liberty, and I don't... You know, I mentioned Assange Soucy this morning. I think I'm going to do a series of programs on Assange Soucy, who was part of the Haitian Revolution, who has been written out of the history for a reason. we take a quick break. Jerry Small, broadcaster, historian, Pan-African, um, live with me in the studio. Uh, we're talking about um, our business. How did we become what we are becoming? How did we get to be where we are? What's happening to our, our, our nation? And uh, what are the likely solutions for some of the issues that we're facing? We're hearing from Jerry Small that uh, the people are very well ready to... Uh, make the next step. That is my phone ringing, you know, Jerry, and I don't even know how that'll go because I can't even find a call. <laughs> you know, my apologies. I am trying to answer this call just so that whoever is calling me understands that I'm live on air and possibly talking into the microphone. All right. Um, Jerry, you stopped um, just now at the 
uh, the, the reparations and the fact that, okay, so here IIT I, has, has found itself in this place because they um, had to pay for their liberty, pay France for their liberty. This is and, in order that yes. a black African revolution and republic may must not succeed and spread to other islands and spread to the continent of the liberation of the people of Morocco by themselves, starting with Haiti. And therefore, the other white powers came to the assistance of France, crushed down Haiti, and have been extracting reparations for hundreds of years now. Now, wholeness is the papa, is the baby duck of Jamaica, trying to implement a baby, try, trying to implement a baby duck situation in Jamaica. You well, we have the to ex- baby doc explain crap. baby doc because not many people will, not many of our listeners remember um, baby doc and some people never hear the name. Baby, uh, Haiti after after being crushed down, after Haiti was crushed down by outside forces and made to pay reparations to France for hundreds of years, a series of dictators that were not liberators have been running Haiti and being the proxy of imperialist powers from Europe to the North Atlantic. North Atlantic um, proxy po- um, people, proxy of North Atlantic. Now, in the modern time now, a doctor, a medical doctor who, because of his voodoo practice and, and the respect of the people of Haiti for his voodoo capabilities, took power in Haiti similar to the power that was taken in Grenada by the Grenada and, um, trade union leader. What's name again? And he, and he took power in uh, Who was Haiti, overthrown? Like, like, Who was like overthrown? Took- now, he ruled Haiti along with his armed gangs. He was like the PNP and the JLP of, of Haiti. Mm-hmm. The armed gangs of the PNP and the JLP since the 1940s that um, is full of high-powered weapons. Not no revolver, no knife again. High-powered weapons since the 1960s. Mm-hmm. So the Tantan Makut was his personal force enforcer. Mm-hmm. And he ruled Haiti for many years till his son was installed, a 19-year-old um, successor dictator, Baby Doc. Now, Baby Doc reinforced him, himself by including some military support. Now, uh, and then um, the military support actually outran him and even took over, took away... Um, took away the rulership of Haiti from the Malata faction which he represents, Baby Doc. Mm-hmm. But wholeness is like that Baby Doc here now. And, and Rocky Maid is the, Haitianize, is, is the attempted Haitianization of, of the of Jamaican politics with the military, along with the politicians, backed by the money people and the land people and by foreign governments, keeping the minority in control in Jamaica. This is the attempt. And they want to permanentize it by putting the same Rocky Maid as the effective head of the Constitutional Reform Committee. He he's the vice chair to um he's the vice chair to, to, to the, the minister. Lady, the, the previous attorney yes, general. Yes. But he's actually the, the head of that commission. He's more like probably a legal advisor. But there are mm-hmm. fourteen there are about eleven lawyers there already. Malabu so he George, now, yes. He in effect is learning government and as well as how him learn military. You understand? There's that is the attempt. And they are they want to want to remove Charles as head, but they want to put as an, as a, as ineffective a head or or somebody not benefiting us as much just as Charles by putting a ceremonial president who will be appointed by the prime minister. Or if one be, feel, believes that he can win against Golden in a head to head election, like or the president of America, like or the head of the Democratic Party and the head of the Republican runner for president. If, go, if wholeness is confident that a, a, a colorless golden of the PNP can't beat him in a popularity contest, he would be willing to have an elected head of government. If he don't believe that he can beat a wholeness, or if he feel like a Lisa Hanna or a Damian Crawford can rise up and out, get outvote him in a head-to-head contest, he will still go along with the ceremonial president but he will get elected prime minister by the parliament. Well, this is not elected prime minister of Jamaica by the people of Jamaica. He's elected by the, those who win seats. But we see, right, uh, and uh, we could go into that, but, but hang on a second. But we see uh, a weakened wholeness right now, right? Yeah, he, he is weakened and, and um, waking up 
and probably in trepidation more than, him, more than he shows on his face. Um, lately, mostly because of the fallout of the bolt money which was stolen by people known and unknown. That fallout has hurt him and helped the PNP to draw nearer, probably level or probably not so level with them in the polls. Mm. And there, that is why the local government election was postponed. Mm. Not because they don't have money. They didn't have enough money to keep local government election and then they can triple them on pay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And triple the pay of all councils well, in Jamaica. And double the pay of the judiciary. That's a point. Um, and and here we are, <laughs> you know. All right, it, talking it's, about it's that now. So, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, go, you go ahead. All right, NIDS is another key strategy, strategy amongst the strategem that they have. Now, NIDS is a new and comprehensive identification system. The old identification system only identify your name, your address, your date of birth, and your age, roughly. Well, I'm going to bring in on this, not to go and identify you in every way, from your head to your toe, including your fingerprint. And your blood, and your blood type. And every transaction, if you're going to buy yes. a stick of herb, ganja. Yes. The needs, no, that is the cash set, so don't come to the cash set. But the needs going come is a comprehensive identification system. Can I ask you a question? Because some of these things seem to me, right, um, needs, cashless. These are things that are imposed on Jamaica from a global imposed. from a global space. Yes. Which Jamaica has already collected the money for. Yes. Co- and what already it, what? Collected the money. Yes, yes. For. So whatever is going to happen has already happened. Yeah. Could have balled you dead. It, it already happened. Um, short of, you know, we putting ourselves in charge of ourselves. So these things are already underway. Needs and the cashless money. We well, I'm, and yet him say it is not underway, but we know it's underway. No, it's underway. It's almost done. Yeah. Remember, I don't know if you remember the programs I was doing during COVID, you know. Yeah. It, the, 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 the UK, US, and um, Europe, and everybody, they were saying that in the Great Reset, this is what's going to happen. This outside, is the reset. On, on the back side. This yeah. is the, this so, is the up, They had the plan a long time. Yes. But this is the opportune time for the reset. Right. So, so, so the cashless is going to happen. It did, it is, and it needs as a part of the same identification needs, system. Yes, yes. And it is also... A because part. the cashless is about no cash, you know, identity. Right, yes, yes. His identity will exactly. be the cash. Exactly. So because, these, because are, it, yes. these are imposed. These no. are... Imposition. These are, yeah, these are being imposed, but Jamaica has collected for these. Though, Not Jamaica. Andrew. The administration. Andrew. Yeah, the administration right. has collected, yes. So, uh, and, and then even before him... There are some things that the PNP also, yes, they uh, also did yeah, that, yeah. That, that they themselves are participating yes. in, the, in the sale yes. of Jamaica. So you have to yes, wonder yes. now um, to the, the, the extent to which we don't have chains on our hands and our feet, the extent to which we are sold. Yeah, because okay. there are other ways to chain you. Yes. So, so they have already done that too. Yeah. And, and also All to right. Here, all right. So, so yeah. outside of those, yeah. um, what, what is the... What is the is, is this sustainable? What is happening? What we're seeing now? Because we see Haiti, you know, it, is, it, it, it sustained itself in, yes, in yes. Haiti. It did. Yes. Because look at, this, look at this country. Look at what um, the, the Clintons came in and made it them, them, them plantation, yeah. them slavery plantation. Yeah. And now we see every, every president has come yeah. in and done that. Uh, the people have taken up arms now to defend themselves. Them, them say it is gang warfare. Um, it's an interesting situation that's happening in Haiti. Yes, yes. The but people so, but, but are now domi- the people are in the process of dominating at least some of the gangs. Yes, yes, they have taken over the gangs. Yes. No, l- let me ask you a question. The, um, there was, do you remember that um, Prime Minister Andrew Holness that he that there was an announcement on a, of of young men who were taken from inner city communities and violent communities and they were trained as in the army, soldiers yeah. and so on. What happened to those young men? They still in the army? Rocky Mead and him know what happened to them. Are they still in, do we know if they're still in the army? What, the, the part, what did they want to do? They, they are co-opting them into them system. They are not freeing them and freeing the people of Jamaica. They are co-opting them. In other words, you, you grab them and you turn them to your purposes. That's why the Minister of National Security can be, an, minister, can be the member of parliament for one of the most gang-infested parts of Jamaica and live happily ever after. Why do you think that he's still... The Why, what? Why do you think that he's, he's still, even with the cabinet shuffle, yeah. 
uh, you know, we deliver he, he still? Still? that he's still the Minister of National Because Security. he's a strong man. He's a strong man, um, like, like in Haiti. So anyway, the needs now, as you know, it has been supplied by Israel, which is a prime intelligence and identification and, and, and um, intelligence Which and, is in charge of and tracking of people and information mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in the world. Yes, yes. Now, the needs now, after, when the needs come in by next year, and the next election is 2025 due, if you don't take the needs, will you be qualified to vote? If you don't have that a- ID, can you vote? Part, uh, well, um, my thinking is no. All right. All right. Then, okay. then, therefore, who will win the election? The needs is a mechanism. It is. It the is, needs is an insurance and a guarantee. It is. It is where we are, and so that if we no, which people will, is, which people will, will, will gladly go into the needs. Nobody now will gladly. No, 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 no. The it, supporters of the administration will gladly go into the needs. Well, yeah. Point Remember taken, when point when taken. when the compulsory vaccine was was being True. threatened on the yes. people of Jamaica by yes. one. What did he say? He know that he, he politically couldn't force the people, but he, but what did he say? What, what did he threaten the people of Jamaica with? Mm-mm. That they must take it. He told them that if you don't take it, your employer is the private sector backed him up and said, uh, if you don't take it, true, your employer true. going to stop you from work. Yeah, I'm not and going to stop you, but, but you might not be able to work. And they started the vaccine, yes. they opened the stadium arena everywhere mm. you could have get it yes. every day. And they were announcing the figures every day. 2% vaccinated today. Yes. Next day, 3% vaccinated. Next day, 5% is growing. Mm. 7% going. When it reaches 15%, 18%, it starts slow down. Mm. And when it reaches about 20%, them stop and make the announcement every day who vaccinated. Because it slowed down and they were being, yes. the announcement was now an embarrassment. Yeah, and did they suspend it? Well, yes. They suspended uh, because they could not force the people. In the same way that they suspended COVID. And, how, and, and how many it, people took the vaccine under compulsion? Or what percentage? Um, you know, I don't know. Early 20s percent. Oh, really? The same percentage that voted for it, them. Remember well, they were saying, what was the aim of the compulsory vaccination? Sure? What, what, what is herd immunity? Is what a, percentage? Uh, you mean medically speaking? Yes, the theory of you, herd immunity. Herd immunity, says, you want a higher, it's somewhere closer to 50%. Yes, her, mm. the, the theory of herd immunity mm. is that if your population is two-thirds mm. dealt with and go under something, mm. the other one-third who don't take it will be eliminated mm. and the two-thirds mm. will repopulate the place mm. and that's what you call the whole herd will be immune. Right. He said it's 65% vaccination we're looking Mm. When we get 65, Jamaica will be free because who not take it going dead off mm. and who take it will be safe and repopulate the True. place. The True. same 65 percent was approximate to the 67 percent who refused to vote for none of them. Right. They could not achieve that 65 percent. It stopped at 20. So tell me, about, tell me the point you're making, Jerry. The point is that is that same set of diehard people who support the two parties are those who will bow to the needs. And therefore, it's either one of them going to win election on the needs, which will keep out the third force, which is, the whole object is to keep out that third force perpetually. In the next... Uh, in the, in the, it can't be done. We have Don't four, fret. We have four minutes. <laughs> it have can't four. be done. Even the cashless, they cannot impose it on us. The whole world, it looks like it's inevitable. You know, people yeah. read about the Bible, so the mark of the beast. Mm. True religion, religion, I tell you, it can't be avoided. You must go on that. Right. The world will not buckle on that. No, and we see we we see um, that they are also putting in safeguards globally because yeah. we have, for example, global. if you look in in the US, you see what's happening in that that that, that country divided down the the, the, the middle yes. because you have a serious pushback from the conservatives yes. initially. The, the, the Republicans yes. are the ones that are pushing back at all of these things. But even the medical them, personnel in, in America, nurses and doctors, yes. Where the men push us back against compulsory vaccine. Now. Yes, but the, but the medical personnel who were, who were mostly tied to the Republican Party, that is the situation. That is a, that that is a fact. But the fact is also that by ver- through various reasons, the whole world not going buckle to certain things. No, as if as like, as as a whole, but that was was a COVID lockdown was a test. The whole world never buckled under it, but yes. but majority of the world did. Yes. Africa did not. Yes, majority of Africa did not, with the exception of South Africa. Yeah. So there you go. Yes, and a lot of us in the Caribbean obviously did not, including Jamaica. Yeah. So 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 
where does that leave us is a question that we must answer because we're coming up on another pandemic. Yes. Um, what, whether it is medical, yes or yeah. no, we don't know. Or war. War is also a pandemic. Right. Which they use. War is an industry. Mm-hmm. War is big business. Mm-hmm. So, so in the in the next two minutes, um, where so what the the I hear you talk about the, um, the the resilience of the Jamaican people, those who will not bow, those who will not um, uh, buy into what what they are selling. Yeah. Uh, how do these people then begin to put themselves in charge of themselves? Yet they have they have been beginning to do that a long time. How long have you been at RFM? 31 years. You don't realize. Or two. Yes, 32 you, well, years. Well, you don't realize how long this thing has been on the way. And you don't realize the work where you do. I know you realize, you know. But you still, you see, when people practice to humble themselves so that nobody else can humble them, it's a great thing. And, and you always don't fully realize how much you do. And it's better you don't realize how much you do, that your head nobody as well. So you yourself and the people of Jamaica themselves, Hardly even realize how much, how much on top of things we are getting together. Getting together. We, we, we're there ahead of the game. You, you remember Merlin Naughty? How Merlin Naughty lose most of the them? She, look, she can't see nobody beside her, and she's wondering where are they, and she turn and look, and that's when them pass her. Sometimes they are so, and it happened to, to, to a half a pole. Way ahead in the race. Can't hear nobody, and when him hear somebody, him freeze up. <laughs> Herb McKenley was a world champion, way ahead in Helsinki, and when him hear the thumping of Arthur Winfoot, him freeze up. We are ahead, and we must stay calm and don't freeze up. Stay calm, stay calm and don't freeze up. That, we'll leave it right there, so Jerry Bonga, Jerry Small. Thank you so much, my brother. As my usual, pleasure. um, adding so much to the space in a very, very serious way. A lot to think about, a lot to think about. Just before we go, um, Uganda, and I'm not quite sure if you're watching Uganda, Jerry, but um, Uganda obviously made some announcements the other day. Now, Al Shabaab is said to have killed 54, 54 Ugandan soldiers in Somalia. So, Uganda is coming under some serious attack right now. It was bound to happen. It is going to happen. There is no other way for, for this one to play out. Yeah. Um, we expected it. So, Al Shabaab is once again in the news. So, Al Shabaab, Al Qaeda, or yeah. any of them can be pulled out at any time yeah. for any particular reason. And used. Reason. Yes, yes. And Ethiopia has been doing so well. And then automatically, Sudan and Egypt were so much arch enemy of Israel. And yet Israel, Sudan, and Egypt come together to foment civil yes. war in Ethiopia. Yes. Because Ethiopia is doing too well. Mm. But we must not, not be dismissed. Of course not. Of course not. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jerry Small. Thank you. As-